light differences. Okay, so in the DUDK, we have those lights, and they have different things going on for them. But we're going to look at a different type of light difference, and that is static versus dynamic. All right, to do that, we go to the content browser and go in here to actor classes. And then look around, find lights, find a spotlight. And let's go to this one spotlight. Now, since we have, we're going to have three spotlights, we want them not to be dominant spotlights. We want to be have three separate spotlights. Once you have a dominant light in a scene, it takes over. All right, so in this case, what I want to do is take this spotlight, put it up in the air, and kind of aim it at this character, this little running guy. So I got three of these set up. I showed you how to do that in the last video as far as like getting one to run. Now I just have to get three to run. Okay. Just going to aim this little arrow at it. Double click. And I'm going to change its inner and outer cone to like 15 and 15. Go to lit. You can see that. Let's make three copies. And now here, see where it says on the ground, if I double click that in this, I want a smooth outline for this. So it says overlie, override light map resolution. And it says 1024. Now if you want a smooth transition for the actual gate here between the property of light and no light, you can up this property right here. Just be careful. You don't want to do that all the time. But on the ground, sometimes it does help if you have sharp transitions between light and no light. All right, so that's changed. Build lighting. All right, so this is the outcome of building the lights. Let's jump in and play. Ooh, let me turn that down. There we go. Ah, and you can see on the ground there's a shadow. This one, this one, but not this one. Same type of light. So the one thing about the UDK is debugging lights. Oh, man. Can I tell you some horror stories about it? So let's kind of look at it. Now, keep in mind, the lights can change. You know, I could turn these to static or dynamic. But also... What really is the kicker is everything in here can change also and have different light channels. So in this case, the light channel, which we're going to find, is casting shadows, not casting dynamic shadows. And it's set to dynamic. Well, this is a skeletal mesh, so skeletal meshes can't accept static. They can only accept dynamic. Up here, if I click that, you'll see a shadow. Because he's a dynamic object, he has to cast dynamic shadows. Therefore, if I went over here to this light, and said, well, you're not going to do that. You're not going to cast dynamic anything. Notice that cast dynamic shadows is off, but yet there is a shadow there. But compa cast composite shadows is on. So a composite shadow is a combination of dynamic and static. 
All right. So what's the difference? Because, you know, oftentimes I'll just leave it as static, but let's go to be just a dynamic light and get rid of static altogether. Leave on composite dynamic. And cast, cast dynamic shadows. And leave off cast dynamic shadows or static. So this is a very dynamic light. You can, you can see it's set with a U. All right, don't forget that the plant here is a static mesh. And of course, I got to build all. All right, once done, I'm going to play from here. And you can see that these two have a light property on the floor. This one does not have a light property, but has a dynamic shadow. Uh, what's the difference? If you look at this shadow and you look at this shadow, not much of a difference. Okay. The secret here is anything that moves has to have a dynamic shadow or a dynamic light. If I was to just have this as a static light, the properties of the sky would look really weird. So in this case, I'll just switch it over to static and leave dynamic off. And you can see that he is dark and the rest is lit. So that's the problem right there. What I usually do is just leave the light alone or make a hyper light. Um, a hyper light is a cross between dynamic and static. So in this case, it has the light properties of both, static, dynamic. And it has dynamic shadows and static shadows. All right. So let's say I move this light. I'll move it over here. Move the character over here. And move the tree over here. Okay. I'm not going to rebuild lighting. And I'm just going to play. Notice I did not have to rebuild my lighting here. Okay. Why was that? Well, a dynamic light source allows you to just move it. It doesn't have any properties of rendering. Notice also how crisp it is around the outside edge. That's crisp. Over here, not so crisp. This requires resolution. So in the scheme of things, you can kind of think of it raster versus vector if you're one of those persons. So this is based upon pixels being broadcast out and then rendered onto some kind of magical map that you just don't see. Or this one, which requires no map, but is very costly to the engine. All right. So that's static versus dynamic in a nutshell. So again, you don't want too many dynamic lights because they're very costly, but they're really nice to beta test with because of the fact that you don't have to re-render them all the time. So you don't have to keep building your lights over and over again. Now over in the corner there it says lighting needs to be rebuilt. But that is the static aspect. Notice the static mesh does not have a shadow. Yeah. So once you rebuild that, it will have a shadow. Just like the other ones would. But it's going to be based on resolution. Because static meshes can't have dynamic shadows. Confused yet? Oh yeah, you wait. It always gets worse with the lighting. But the key is experiment. Experiment, experiment. All right, let's go on to the next tutorial.